You're listening to the Focused and Fearless podcast. I'm your host, Heather Angel, and I've been helping people tune in to what lights them up and increase their personal and professional performance for over a decade. Now I'm best known as a high performance coach helping entrepreneurs like you cut through the noise and create a business and life on your terms. If you're ready to step out of struggle and discover how simple it can be to create a fulfilling, joyful and successful business without all the overwhelm and long hours, you're in the right place. Welcome lovely, this is the first ever encore episode of the Focused and Fearless podcast and what that means is I am going to share with you today the episode where I spoke with the incredible Dominique Mullally. Now if you've already listened to that episode we talked all about the numbers you need to know in your business, how to look after your finances and if you have listened to that episode before you will know that Dominique and I get pretty passionate about the subject of money and some of the nonsense that we see, especially on the online space. Now, if you have listened to this episode before, please don't go, oh, you know, just switch off. Listen to it again. And the reason I am sharing this today is because I am seeing so much fear and frustration around finances right now. And I really want you to know that you can take back control. It's a really important conversation to be having now more than ever, you need to know as a business owner where your money's coming from, what you're doing with it, how you're spending it, how you're investing it, and you need to know your numbers. You always have done, but right now it's more important than ever. So if you haven't listened to it before, my gosh, you are in for a treat. If you have listened to it before, listen again, get that notepad out. Have you actually implemented the advice that Dominique gives you? So, without further ado, let's roll into the interview with the incredible Dominique Mullally. Focused and fearless lovelies, I am joined by oh, one of my good friends and someone who is going to bust some serious myths when it comes to managing your finances in business. Dominique, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Heather. How are you? I'm very good. I am Honestly, like guys, we had to just stop our conversation and go, we need to hit record because <laughs> we are so uh, passionate about this subject. Um, yeah. I've known Dominique for a little while and, uh, you know, I'll let her do a, a full intro to let you know uh, what she's going to share with you. But honestly, we have been tearing our hair out um, about seeing what happens in the online space. And we're so determined to help people have thriving, successful businesses. and finances need to be part of that. You need to know your numbers in business. You need to know the numbers to be looking at. And Dominic is just the girl to help you with everything to do with numbers in your business. So well, thank you. I just, yeah, I just cannot, cannot wait to dive into this. I'm just going to just let you roll with it because yeah. Um, yeah, you've got so much to share. So Dominique, for those that don't know you, can you please share a little bit about who you help and how you help them? Yeah, so I am a business wealth um, strategy, business and wealth strategist, and I help women in business create more money, um, keep the money that they're making, teach them how to invest, how to leverage their businesses, and how to create legacies through their businesses. So it's really important work, and I'm going to try and not get too ranty on my soapbox today because. <laughs> I'm so passionate about this subject and I'm really, my mission is to really empower um, women financially to really understand how to leverage their business as an asset to maximize the profitable opportunities within it so that they can actually go away and use that to build wealth. And as I said, create these legacies for themselves and their families. I'm all about creating generational wealth and having a business is one of the best wealth creation assets that we could ever own in, a, in order to be able to allow us to do that. And having a business allows us to accelerate uh, things like financial freedom and independence. It's not unattainable. It's not this elusive million pounds in the bank. It's a lot more achievable than that. So I like to teach it in a way and get people to understand that this is possible for them as well. So I created financial independence for myself at the age of 31. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. And I love that. And this, do you know what? That is just really important for everyone listening to know. Dominique isn't someone who's just taken a course 
on money mindset or taken a course on oh how to run your money dominic give them a little bit of an idea of your actual background and how you know you have created you are speaking from experience you don't know the theory <laughs> you're living this financially free. yeah yeah i i walk my talk girl i walk my talk <laughs> so um i used to be a financial advisor so I, i've been in the financial um industry for <gasps> God, I'm going to give my age away now for 20, 20 years, nearly 20 years. Um, so quite a long time. And um, when I joined that industry, I was just like a little sponge. I was absorbing all of the information that was being given to me. Um, and I was always taught by my dad, you know, never live beyond your means. So I was always a saver. I never really spent money. Um, but I had all these savings in the bank and I was like, well, what, what am I going to do with this money? And then when I was got into the financial planning world, I learned about investing and how to put your money to work for you. Um, so I went into financial planning myself, became an advisor. Um, and as when I was, I was working as an advisor, I seen massive differences between the way that women and men approach wealth and wealth building. Um, and there's a lot of mindset issues that women face that men just simply don't face. So what I found was that I could give you all the advice and all the strategies all day, every day. However, if you didn't have the belief um, that this was possible for you, then you were going to sabotage any attempts that I, I was trying to make happen for you in order for you to be able to build wealth. So you were going to sabotage by, you know, we'd pay off the credit card, but then you'd go and spend again. Um, or you just, you would never invest the way that you're supposed to invest. So for me, I understood the strategy side of things, but what I really wanted to do was understand, okay, what's the mindset issues that women are really facing? Because I wanted to specialize with women because women have blocks that men just don't have around wealth. So I'm also qualified um, in EFT, NLP and hypnotherapy. And when I say qualified, I don't mean a two day course. I have actually got a diploma in analytical hypnotherapy um, because as I said, the mindset is, is one of the biggest components to creating wealth. And as I said, and that's why we see so many blocks for women and why men are so much more successful financially than women, because they don't have the same limitations that we face day to day. It's the same with our businesses, you know, male owned businesses um, are 14% more financially secure than female businesses. Um, and I can't remember the percentage for revenue, but male owned businesses, um, it's, it's a fact that they actually earn more revenue than female owned businesses as well. And it's because a lot of the things that we see women ma manifest in their day to day uh, goings on in business, things like discounting services, giving away the services free, over delivering, all of these things impact the bottom line. And this is why understanding your numbers and we're obviously going to get into this in a moment, but really paying attention to those is fundamentally important because it keeps your eye on, it keeps your eye on the prize and keeps you aligned with actually what you're here to do, which is not only are you there to save people, but you're also there to make money. And that's really important as well. We're not running, we don't want to be a hobbyist. I see far too many women running their business as a hobby business. Look, we're there to get paid as well. And there should be no apologies about that. I, um, I'm all about... Um, showing up unapologetically and owning our financial successes and not having any shame or guilt around that. Because I said, men certainly don't. So we as women shouldn't either. Oh my, amen to all of that. <laughs> I, I know just, you know, you know, my, my challenges that I've had and the, the journey I've had as well. And I know that there will be people listening to this who just at the listening to you say, you know, we're here to make money as well, would have all of a sudden felt something somewhere in their body like, oh, 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 that's uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm, I'm all right with the serving and the showing up and the helping. I'm all good with that. But, oh, asking for the money and keeping the money, it's whole, whole load of feelings coming up. So I know yeah. that there will be people going, I don't know if I'm ready for this. If yeah. that's you, this episode, you must listen to over and over again it's until it sinks in. Crazy. It's like money is such an emotive topic for women. It's almost like walking into a minefield of emotions and they, they blow up at different times, depending on what the trigger uh, or the wire trap is. Um, and so it's about understanding, you know, what, how, how do your beliefs present themselves and manifest themselves for you in your money habits and in your behavior, uh, your business and how does that show up? 
understanding what the, the beliefs are behind those, dismantling those beliefs and then being able to move forward. And let me tell you as well, mindset work is not like a one fix and then we're done kind of thing. It's, it's like brushing your teeth. It's something you have to do over and over again. And as you say, like new, new, new level, sometimes old devil. It's not always a new devil. It's always sometimes just an old devil, but it's about being consciously aware of them. Look, I am an expert in this. I, I, you know, I know my stuff. But I still have my own blocks. I still have things that I come up against as I as my income increases and as my wealth increases as well. You know, I had a long-standing belief that in order for me to have a successful relationship, I had to earn less than a man because to earn more than a man was emasculating and that meant loss. It's crazy, it's irrational. I know on a logical level it's crazy, but subconsciously it was a belief that I had buried for a very, very long time that I didn't even know surfaced until I was about 23, 24. So I capped my income, income for a long time because of that. And even now, even now that I know that I'm still aware of it, it still presents itself in different ways and I have to be consciously working on it and pushing forward regardless. So just know with beliefs that, as I said, it's not like, We've, we, we bring to the service and they go away overnight. Part of the, the work that we do is about uncovering them and being aware of them and just recognizing how they present themselves. Mm. And then just using tools and certain strategies to be able to push forward regardless. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the, all of that is, is, is so uh, important. And the thing I love that you just said is, I say to my clients all the time, I'm like, new level, new devil. But actually you're right, when it comes to the mindset, new level, old devil and yeah. it's so frustrating when you've been doing the work i remember when i had my first five grand month i was just like oh, i can't tell anyone i only told business <laughs> friends i didn't tell any of like i would call like my normal friends what i was like because that's too much like no one earns that like who can, who can i can't tell anyone except the people that are in the same industry because yeah. they'll understand and it's that same when you get to that point you're like oh come on so every time you jump an income level you're like oh and it's the yeah. same old belief, just manifesting in a different way. You're like, come on, I thought I dealt yeah. with you. Here we go again. <laughs> it's like, he's my friend. He's popping up to say hi. You know, they present themselves. They just let themselves know, be known. So yeah, it's just recognizing it, isn't it? And just as I said, just pushing forward regardless. But you mentioned there about, you know, um, sharing it with certain people. Who you surround yourself with is really important as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that you've become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I absolutely believe that. If you're spending time with people who are broke, and don't believe that creating financial independence and building really profitable, successful businesses are possible for them, then guess what? It ain't gonna be possible for you too because you're also absorbing and taking in their narrative. So listening and paying attention to the, the, the language that people use around you and the actions and how they present themselves in day to day life and how that impacts on you is really important as well. So yeah, if, you're not, if you don't have friends who are of the certain mindset that is for creating wealth and knowing that this is possible for you, then you need to get new friends or you need to align yourself with people who make this possible, who show you that this is possible for you because that's what a lot of this is about. It's about belief and looking to people and thinking, well, hang on a minute, that person can do it, then why can't I? Because we're all born into the world, okay? We're all born bare foot naked, all right? And I can appreciate that some of us have more opportunities than others, but as I said, a lot of it comes down to your mindset and really knowing what's possible for you. So yeah, it's a big obstacle ensuring that you are surrounding yourself with the right people as well. Oh, it, it so, so is. And I've, I've shared that before. Many of my clients, I'm just like, by the way, you, you probably won't have the same friends that you do in about four years time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> be prepared for that. No. And it's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing. It can be, yeah. sometimes that loss can be painful along the way. Um, but sometimes you have to lose in order to gain. You have to make space in order to be able to create, you know, um, and so, you know, they're not losses, they're just lessons. That's how I see it. Mm, yes, 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 yes. So I'd love to know what sort of helped you or, or made you go from, you know, successful financial advisor doing the corporate thing and, you know, you could have just stayed on that track. What drew you to coming into the online space and serving female entrepreneurs specifically? A um, couple of things, working obviously in a corporate space um, and um, I was an independent financial advisor, but I was also um, uh, associated with a certain licensee. So I had limitations on who I could provide advice to, who I was surrounding myself with, all of those kind of things. Um, 
So because of those limitations, I would decide, you know what, I don't want to do this no more. I want to be able to create a business on my terms, completely on my terms with no red tape, no one telling me what I can and can't do. Um, also, the world of financial planning had become very much paper-based. Um, so there was a lot of compliance issues at the time. Um, and it's just gotten, <laughs> the, 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 the paperwork well especially in, i know it's not so much in the uk but in australia now uh, the paperwork has taken all the fun out of actually the advisory role um but the most important uh, reason that i moved across was because i said i wanted to work exclusively with females but i also wanted to build a business that allowed me the flexibility to be able to travel when i wanted do what i wanted so i had at the time i, I was already in a position where i was building all of these assets and i had this income but my job because that's what it was. I was still working for someone else, even though I was an independent financial advisor, I was licensed through someone else. It didn't allow me the flexibility to have this business that I could just pick up and take anywhere I wanted. And that's what having an online business allows us the freedom to do is we have the freedom of choice. And that's what money brings for us as well. So when you have those two things together, and you know, when you stand in that power, it becomes it's it's amazing the impact that you can have um so as i said there was yeah working with women and having the freedom of choice to do what i want when i want where i want and with whom i want was the driving force behind me actually taking the plunge and, and going online yeah and i think freedom is such a common value that i i find certainly you know people i speak to people that start up their own businesses they want that freedom yeah and mm -hmm. then sadly what happens is they realize that oh actually I've just created a really big job for myself exactly. and I'm not getting paid. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not actually seeing the money that I wanted to see. So, um, the, one of the reasons I really wanted, um, Dominique to come on here is to share with you the numbers that we should be looking at in our business. And, you know, we hear it all the time and you can, you'll see it on Instagram posts, you know, know your numbers in business. The problem is a lot of us don't, are not looking at the numbers that matter. We're looking at Instagram followers, our Facebook mm -hmm. likes, you know, things that are ego metrics. And yeah. if someone says, well, you know, what's your profit and loss or, you know, how much profit do you make on that product? People are like, no idea. Absolutely no idea. You can ask, you know, you can ask a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, what was your turnover last quarter? And they can't tell you. So what I'm going to invite uh, Dominique to share is, some amazing numbers that you do need to know. And how many, how many numbers are there, Dominique? We seven. Have seven. So seven numbers every business owner should know. So this is your, <laughs> this is your warning. Get a pad and paper, <laughs> bookmark this episode because <laughs> you're going to want to know. And honestly, hands up. I went through this list. I was like, oh yeah, no, I've really got to get better at that one. <laughs> so yeah. there's going to be, even if you think you're pretty good at your finances, listen through this and listen to the reasons why these are the seven numbers you need to know because i bet there is at least one that you are not tracking effectively mm. so yeah. dominic off you go my lovely yeah so i want to say something before we go into this so you know there's a saying isn't there revenue is uh, vanity profit is sanity cash is reality and that's why these seven numbers that i'm going to go through in the moment are so important I hear so many people, especially in the online space, talk about, oh, I made six figures in revenue. Oh, I did this. I really don't care. Okay. That means nothing to me. Revenue is irrelevant. What, what's most important is your profits and your cash flow margins. So you may only make 10,000 pounds in a year, but if your gross profit margin for that year was 40%, then high five to you because that means that you actually have a very healthy, sustainable profitable business. I see far too many women are focused on making six figures in business, but then when we look at the gross profit margins for the year, they're less than 10%. Okay. So it's really, really important that we understand that what is, what's important to measure in a business are, as I said, the seven numbers I'm going to go through in the moment are the most important metrics. And as you said, things like Instagram, likes do not pay the bills. Okay. How many, how many people you get showing up on, on Facebook live do not pay the bills. Okay. What's important is are these converting into sales? So that brings me to the first one, which is revenue. So you need to understand, as I said, it is, it is vanity, but it's still something that it's, it's a measure that helps us understand where we are in terms of our sales. So our revenue, our revenue, sorry, sales is measured by revenue. 
So understanding what your revenue is for the year is crucial, okay? Your revenue should incorporate things like your profit, uh, your margins, sorry, any percentage of profit you want to set aside. It should inclu include things like taxes. So understanding how much money you paid in taxes, both last year as a corporation and as a personal um, business owner as well. Looking at things like your operating expenses and ensuring that um, those are covered. Um, and then uh, your salary as well. So your revenue targets must be inclusive of all of those, okay? So that's why it is still important to measure because what happens is a lot of people set their revenue targets and then sell themselves short. And then they end up using their personal money to help sustain the business because their revenue targets that they set for the year have not been high enough, okay? So revenue is really, really important. And we need to understand that not only are we measuring it, but we're also setting the correct targets to ensure they said that all bases are covered. So that's the first thing. Second thing is expenses. Obviously we need to know how much money we're spending and we need to know how we're spending it as well. Profit, which is the gap in between income and expenditure. We always want to be widening that. So in a business, we always want to be going as lean as possible. And where we are spending money, we want to be spending it wisely. And we want to be ensuring that we're getting the best return on the investment when we are spending money, okay? Because I see a lot of entrepreneurs spend money on things that are unnecessary and are not contributing to the bottom line. So understanding how much money you're spending and, as I said, and where you're spending it is crucial as well. Third one is profit and loss. Obviously, it's, it's, it will explain itself. You're either profitable or you're losing money. So this summarizes your business performance overall. And this helps you get an understanding of the sustainability of your business. So you want to be looking at like the last 12 months, but back two to three years if you can. Obviously, it depends how long you've been in operation for to understand what is the average profit, profit you are turning over or how much money are you losing. And if you're losing money, what do you need to be doing differently? And that's where you look at things like your products and your services and your offering. You understand, okay, where am I making money? Where am I losing money? Am I maximizing my most profitable opportunities in the business? Which then brings me on to point four, which is your gross profit margin. So this is understanding. Um, <clears throat> this is always displayed as a percentage, okay? And what this does is it compares your uh, profit to your sales. So incorporate all of your expenses as well. And it tells you actually how profitable is that product service um, or offering that you are putting onto the market. How much profit each and every time you generate one sale is that is that making? And then obviously overall, it, we look at it as a business. We need to understand the higher the, the gross profit margins, the more profitable your business is. Then number five is operating uh, cash flow. So cash is king. If you do not have cash flow in your business, you effectively could be in big trouble. And this is where we see a lot of big corporations fall over. So again, we talk about revenue. Yes, they may be turning over hundred million pounds in revenue each and every year, but actually they have absolutely zero cash flow. So when things go wrong and when the markets turn, which are obviously we've seen with COVID-19, they don't have the resources and the means to be able to continue to pay their expenses. So cash flow, operating cash flow is really important because we can get an understanding of what's coming in and out of your business. And we always want to be looking at it as a 360 degree angle and understanding is there sufficient cash flow in the business each and every month to, to meet all of our um, operating expenses? Are we going to be in a position where we can forecast to ensure that we have sustainability? Because uh, revenue is all great and that's all good. But if you've got no cash flow to sustain the business, then you have no business. Number six is your lifetime value of a customer. So for those of you especially <clears throat> who have product service based in, uh, businesses, you want to be looking to maximize the lifetime value of your customer, okay? So if one customer comes in, they spend 300 pounds with you, you want to be understanding, okay, how can I get them to spend 500 pounds? It's about expanding um, the, the, the value of that customer. It's far easier to service an existing customer than it is to attract a new one. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we look to incorporate all these brand new products and service offerings. It could be streamlining your business. It could just be bumping and adding on, you know, um, an upsell or a downsell or whatever it may be. But we always want to be expanding the lifetime value of a customer. And the last one is um, customer acquisition, acquisition cost. 
So it's really important that we understand how much are we spending to acquire a customer. Um, now, some people think, okay, well, the less, less is more. And that's not necessarily, the, uh, sorry, less is best. And that's not always, not necessarily, the, not always. It's not always necessarily the case, okay? Sometimes people are not spending enough money on marketing and they need to spend more money on Facebook ads or some form of marketing to generate customers. So yeah, co a customer acquisition cost is, is really important because we need to have a clear understanding of are we spending enough money to, draw, to generate um, enough customers? Or are we spending too much money and not seeing the return on those investments? So yeah, those are the most seven crucial numbers that you need to know in your business. There's obviously some other numbers that fall into it, but in terms of actually running a business as a CEO and as a CFO, which is Chief Financial, Chief Financial officer, officer, those are probably the most important. So yeah, there's a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone listen back put it on like half speed write it all down get it all and you know i'll be putting the links uh to uh, dominic's instagram so you can connect with her and and see all the, the stuff she shares anyway but you know i really i really want to dive into some of those because it's it's so interesting you said at the very beginning and um, before you went into the seven numbers and we see this all the time my clients and i bang on about this all the time people shouting about I've just had a six figure launch. I mm. just had a seven figure launch, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. When you go into those numbers, they are, as Dominic said, they're talking about revenue. You know, I know of people who have been like, woohoo, I just made 10 grand. I'm like, yeah, but I know you spent eight and a half on Facebook ads. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, exactly. <laughs> and that's where your customer acquisition cost comes into it. So it's like, okay, great. You made 10 grand, but actually how much did it cost you to acquire those customers? So that's why looking at all of these numbers is really, really important. As I said, you know, I don't want people to get hung up. People should never measure their success against someone else. Financial success or success in general is something that's very personal, personable. But as I said, what's most important is that you are making profit in your business and you have healthy cash flow. If you have that, I don't care if you are making 10 or 15,000 pounds a year. If you have healthy cash flow and you have healthy profits, you are doing well. And then all you need to do is understand, okay, I've got the foundations which are working correctly. Cause this is the other thing as well as people go into business and they just, they get, they're so excited. They just want to, you know, dive right in and they don't systemize or strategize actually how do we underpin the systems and the strategies that support growth so as i said if you've got a business that has healthy profits and healthy cash margin uh, cash flow then you're in a position to grow and scale that business and do it in a way that is sustainable because like, what i also see a lot of people do is they get all this cash into their business and they don't know what the hell to do with it so they go and spend it and they spend it on means which are not going to generate um some kind of rev uh, return on the investment or they take it all out the business and they don't buy any assets out to that side of the business. And that's a whole nother conversation. So understanding, <clears throat> excuse me, how you're utilizing the money in your business and where it's going is important. Um, so yeah. yeah. And it, that's, there's, there's so much to dive into. And it's actually really interesting because obviously we started this conversation around the mindset piece and how women have very, different views around money and we have so many different blocks and i think actually it's really interesting those people you know there are people out there making the money yeah and then it goes as quickly as they get it so yes. they have the ability to have a really profitable business but they don't feel comfortable yes. having that money and i think you know uh, you know it would be great for you to speak to that but i think i've shared with my clients before that actually you know at the beginning of my journey i was just like okay well i've read the self development book i've done the mindset stuff i've worked with a coach where is the money? Like, show me the money. Like, give me the money. I want it now. And honestly, thank goodness it didn't all fall in my lap back then because I wouldn't have a penny of it now because my money mindset was not in the place ready to receive it. I would have sabotaged it completely. So, yeah. you know, do you, do you see a lot of that? I mean, I see it, I see it all the time with, you know, with my clients and just, they sort of think that they're, they're ready and they want the money. And it's like, yeah, but the, the reason it's not coming is that there's a little bit more work to do. And actually, yeah. once it comes in, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's twofold. So <clears throat> when we're running a business, a money mindset is a big part. So as I said, it's probably like 80% of it. But then as I said, what is also 
really important is the foundations which then support the business because you can make all the money in the world but if you can't keep it and you don't know how to use it to generate more then you have a problem and this is where a lot of women um, in business especially run into you know sticky situations uh, because they're great at making the money but they're not so great at keeping it and it's not always necessarily to do with their mindset it's because they're not paying attention to their numbers it's because they're not systemizing and automating certain processes within the business to ensure that they can meet all of their financial obligations and you know let's be honest as well your business sustains your personal life okay so your business needs to make money and your business needs to be able to provide you with a salary. But that doesn't mean that you get to use your business as a piggy bank, which is what a lot of women in business do as well. Um, your business, I want you to look at your business as an asset, okay? It's something that we are growing. And you know, assets can, be, uh, can increase in capital value. So two types of assets. You've got an asset that can just give you income, and then you've got an asset that can provide you with the capital, an increase in capital value, and also provide you with an income. Now, for some of you, you might want to just look at it as an income producing asset. So you just focused on uh, revenue, profits, and cash flows. They're the three things that you're focused on. But for some of us, we want to be looking at our business as a sellable asset. So we want to be focused really heavily on understanding how much profit is. So again, it's not about revenue. When you're selling an asset as a business, business sorry, selling a business as an asset, we're looking at the profit margins within the business because that's how a business is valued. So understanding, and I know I'm going off topic here a little bit here, but you really need to understand when you're in business, what type of business are you building? Are you building a lifestyle business or are you building a legacy business? Because depending on what type of, style, what type of business you are building, it will ultimately determine how you then show up and, how, and what, what actions and functions you perform in your business and how intentional and how focused and how streamlined you are with everything that you do in your business and moving forward. It's good to have five year plans. We need to be looking ahead, but we also need to be planning in the short term and understanding <clears throat> what are the day to day things that we're doing in our business or not doing that are impacting on our bottom line. So habits is a big part of it. And some of that, as you said, does come from your mindset, but some of it also comes from not really understanding how the foundations underpin all of that and support you in building wealth through your business. Mm. I, I really hope everyone listening to this is just bookmark this, listen to it again, because <laughs> it's all of this stuff. And the reason I, I am so pleased that we've been able to have this discussion is because you know, I've shared with you and I may have well have shared it on the podcast before. My first year in business, I spent 10 grand and made 786 pounds. Mm. Like I was working my little socks off and had no freaking idea. I'd done the courses, I'd done the business courses, I'd done the training. And I was like, huh, I still don't really know what to do with the money thing. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, you know, you've got to, um, what was the thing I kept, I think I'd watched far too many episodes of The Apprentice and I was like, I've got to spend money to make money. And I was like, yeah, I'm spending it really well. I'm not making it that well. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's only when you really take a long, hard look. Had I been following everything that Dominic just shared, I would have known within a couple of months, I'm like, oh, oh, hang on. I need to look at this. I need to read, you know, mm. I need to make sure I've got some more coming in before I start spending on random stuff like branded notebooks because that's what's going to make a business successful, you know? <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, as an entrepreneur as well, we wear so many hats, especially in the early days when we don't have the means to be able to outsource a lot, out, outsource? <laughs> outsource. <laughs> outsource a lot of these functions. We're not in a position financially where we can say to someone, hey, can you pick up my social media or hey, can you do this or you do that? So quite often the financial components get left to the last. You know, I always say we need to get into bed with our numbers. Like we actually need to get really intimate with them. Um, and it's really, really, it's one of the most important things that we should be doing. Yes, marketing obviously is fundamentally important because that drives the revenue. But also we need to understand that once we get the revenue, what are we doing with the money that's coming in and how are we using it to generate more money? As you said, there's that saying, isn't that, you know, we need to make money, yeah, Make money, money. What is it you said? Spend money to make money. Spend money to make money. Um, and we do, but as I said, 
even with that mindset, we need to understand that are we spending money on the right things? Mm -hmm. Are the things that we're spending money on generating a return on the investment? Because guess what? Just because you drop three thousand pounds on this whole brand new, you know, amazing look, looking branding, doesn't mean that it's going to bring in new clients. Okay, it's not going to bring in new customers. So especially in the first, like the first few months or the first um, couple of years in your business, you want to be really intentional and spending the money wisely with the money that is coming through your business. Um, and also what I would say as well, depending on your profit margins, you may not be in a position in the early stages of your business to take profit out of the business because your intention might, might be to actually scale and grow the business a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. So really understanding what your plans are in the future. And knowing how to use the money that's coming in is really fundamentally important. It's, it's, mm. it's so important. So please don't ignore your numbers. I always say have a money date. Okay. I do my financials every single Friday. So I have a finance Friday. Um, and then on a once a month, I really go through in finer detail. So the fr every Friday is like, a, it's just a quick summary. It's like an overview. And then once a month, I go into a really detailed um, understanding of where my numbers are and what I'm doing in the business and how it's looking. Um, because a lot of people as well, um, don't forecast and project. And that's really, really important when you are running a business, a proper business, I say a proper business, because as a lot of people are not running businesses the way that they should be run, um, you need to understand and have a clear line of sight when your money is coming in, what your expenses are and be able to forecast accordingly because you never want to be in a position where you get caught short, where you have to then desperately sell in order to pay the tax man or in order to pay your salary or to pay for a contractor or whatever it may be. So being really smart and intentional and planning all the financials in your business, understanding how to systemize, how to strategize, all of this stuff is really, really important because it's going to ensure that your business is sustainable before it's profitable because we want to make sure that you're around in four or five, you know, five years time because let's be honest, the reason that most businesses fail in the first five years is to do with cash flow. So 82% of business, new businesses fail because of cash flow, And it's because of all of these things that I've talked about. It's a, it's not getting into, into bed with your numbers and being intimate with them and really, really understanding. I know that money isn't fun for some people, but guess what? My job is to empower you with the knowledge that actually is fun. Money is fun because we love to spend money. We just don't like to spend time looking at it. It's really, it's, it's crazy. It's almost like this like complete contradiction. We have no problems as women spending money and, you know, throwing it about and, and using it in ways that bring us joy. But when it comes to receiving it or spending time actually looking at it, we're like, oh no, no, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. But it is that you need to have that line of sight in order to be able to spend the money. So yeah, it's, it's, it's something I'm fiercely, fiercely passionate about because you know, there's so much, I'm going to get in my little soapbox now. There's so much fluff in the industry, people talking about money mindset, and that's great. You know, look, I'm, I'm a big woo person. Me and Heather have just been talking about this before the interview started. I'm woo, okay? Don't get me wrong. But woo, as in the visualization of law of attraction, does not bring in the money. Thinking things and wishing for them does not bring in the money. There needs to be a very strategical intention behind that. So what I do is teach you, get you into the mindset of knowing this possible is possible for you, but then I give you the how to do it as well, which is the most important component. It's the two that go together to give you a winning formula for financial success. Yeah, 100%, because everyone knows about the law of attraction, but you know that law of action, that, that needs to happen too. <laughs> you need to actually... Yes do some things about it. You can't just hope and think it'll all work out fine. So yeah, yeah it's, oh, you, you've given so much food for thought. There's even things that I've scribbled down in my, uh, in my notes. I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm going to speak to her about that actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's so many, so many things. And I think what's really important is please, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, okay, cool. Well, once I start making some money, I'll look into that. No, if I could reverse five years, I would have done this first. Mm -hmm. I would have learned this stuff. Yes. And guys, I'm a past bank manager, okay? Budgets, finances, the theory I knew. Running a business is different. It's very, very different. You need to know these numbers. You need to know how to have a profit and loss. I mean, honestly, I was about two and a half years into my wedding business before someone said, so 
what do you track your profit and loss on? I was like, what's that? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> no idea, because no one had talked to me about that. I, I knew everything what? about... <laughs> you everything about wedding planning, marketing. I mean, I'd have three yeah. websites by that point, so I knew everything about WordPress. I was like, oh, profit and loss? Oh, I mean, you mean the money that comes in and then I just spend it? Yeah, like, that's, that's it, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the thing, we're not, we're not taught this stuff, are we? We're not no. taught this stuff. And something you mentioned there as well is like, I hate the way budget. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm one of those people. I don't believe in budgets. Yeah. Right? I know that sounds crazy coming from me, but budget to me is like a sense of deprivation. And what I teach is, okay, let's not focus on budgeting and um, always looking at focus on like spending less. That's not what I teach you to focus on. I teach you on how to earn more so that you can spend more on the things that you value. Because budgets are like diets, they do not work for anyone because the minute you tell someone you have to give something up or we need to cut back on something that you value and is important to you, it's almost like you go into a moment of self-sabotage and you're really great for like all of like a couple of days and then what happens is it only becomes like a binge effect. So I hate the word budgets, I never use them. As I said, I associate with them deprivation. So please know that for me, I'm all about focus on expanding your income so that you can have more of what you love and do more of what you love and experience more of what you love. I'm all about the more. <laughs> mm, amen to that because that's where we go into business. You know, you, you can't go on, on Facebook for a, a second without seeing someone telling you that, you know, they live on a beach and work from a laptop and everyone's like, I want that. I want that freedom. But, you know, please remember what we said at the very beginning. It doesn't, you know, like you said, you don't need a million pounds in the bank. No. You have financial freedom. That's what people, I, you know, I used to think that. I was like, wow, financial freedom is so far off because I've got to get to a million pounds or I've got to have like a million. Like I really thought the numbers had to be really high. No. And it's only when I really started looking into it, I was like, oh, no, actually. <laughs> financial yeah. freedom's coming a little bit quicker than that. So yeah. you don't need these huge numbers necessarily to, to have a financially free life. No, exactly. And this is why focusing on profit and really understanding what type of business you're building and what type of life you're building is really important because, you know, some people think, oh, to be financially free, they have to have the Beyonce lifestyle and it's 20,000 pounds a month. It's not. It's understanding, okay, what's your most basic number? What is the most basic number that you need in your personal life to live without having to do anything? And when I talk about passive income, I'm talking about passive income as in like, you sit back, you kick back, you do nothing passive. I'm not talking about running passive courses. Or I'm talking about assets outside the business that provides 100% passive income. And trust me, I know because this is how I structured my wealth. So that's one of the components that I really empower. Um, really teach and want to empower women with is let's set up the foundations of your business and understand all of your numbers so that you can pay attention to your profit margins and you can be in a position where you can buy assets outside of your business that buy you the freedom that you want. Because for some people, when they start to figure out the numbers, they're like, oh my God, I actually need a thousand pounds a month in order to be able to sustain my lifestyle. That's it, bare basics. And when you give them those numbers and go, okay, so you need 12,000 pounds, uh, sorry, 12,000 pounds a year in passive income. Okay, so you need to build a portfolio of X. That's possible for you. Then that's when they start to get really excited about numbers. And then that's when they really start to, to really understand how to drive and link to their values, which then connect them to their business and motivate them to want to show up and do all the things that are necessary because they've connected the dots to understand how their business can actually provide them the portal and the vehicle to provide them with the freedom-based lifestyle and create the income as well. Because some people make out like they have a freedom-based lifestyle, but the reality is that if they were to stop working, they would have no income. So they're the brands. That's not a pass. That's not passive income. I'm talking about building assets that don't require you, your time or your presence in order to generate income. And that, that is, is so true important. financial freedom. Yeah. And that is, I mean, that really like, I had got goosebumps when you said that, because I think so many people need to hear that, like, you know, a grand a month, that might be all it is in passive income. And I think I love the way you explain your, your, your a business as a vehicle because it, I think a lot of people like, you know, a lot of my audience are coaches, consultants, therapists. So like, well, if I do stop working, I do stop earning. It's like, yes, yes. that's why the money you're yes. bringing in needs to work for you. 
And you know, this is what you don't see on Instagram. You see the shiny, shiny, yeah. and you presume, okay, they've got all that wealth from showing up and doing some coaching and some things. It's like, no, <laughs> they've invested that money wisely. And yeah. that's what's paying for the yacht. And that's what's yeah. doing this. <laughs> and do you know what? I'll let you in on a little secret. And I always say this to people. I don't proclaim to be a millionaire. Okay. I'm not a millionaire. I don't drive a big flash car. I don't live in a big fancy house. But what I do have is cash in my bank and assets which provide me an income that mean if I want to kick back for the next five years, I can because I've got an income that allows me to do that with COVID-19. So COVID-19 is a prime example of why you need to be building assets outside of your business. I'm all about diversification of income. So if, you're, if you just have all of your income coming through your business, that is a risky move, okay? Because what you're effectively doing is putting all your eggs in one basket. And I think with COVID-19, this is obviously highlighted for a lot of people because obviously they've seen their sales really dip because obviously there's fear in the market at the moment. You know, we are potentially going to go into a recession. There's no denying that. And who knows how that will impact the market. So people are going to see their income shrink if they haven't already. So this is why like it's so important this is why i'm so fiercely passionate about it is let's be smart with the money that's coming through our business because if you really want to buy your freedom you use the business as the accelerator to buy the assets which then provide you with the income so that you can do more of what you love and it just becomes this free-flowing cycle of assets income assets income assets income so it's something that you yeah if, if you if Anyone can take anything away from today, apart from the seven numbers <laughs> they need to know, is get into the mindset of knowing that your business is a wealth creation vehicle and it will get you to financial freedom and financial independence if you allow it, but you need to be strategical and you need to be intentional with all of the money that's coming in. And as I said, if it's possible for me, if it's possible for my clients, it's possible for you too. It's not something that is a pie in the sky kind of like dream, okay? It's not. People, and I don't want to go too much into my soapbox here, but people and society and the system will have you believe that, okay? But there are ways and means in, in, in order for you, the way, there are ways and means for you to generate wealth that are not dependent on you showing up and giving your time. It's that whole exchange of time for value. Yes, we might need to do it in our business initially to set up the systems that allow us to build the assets, but eventually we want to get to a position where we, it just becomes something, we just get paid for doing something that we absolutely love. That's a bonus. And the rest of the income comes from other assets. And, you know, you touched on something before, I think, I just want to make this point as well, is that 80% of women go into retirement in poverty. Okay. So you are thinking about, okay, we just thinking about now you're earning income and that's great. What happens is people, women, in particular, don't plan for their retirement. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 40 this year. Oh God, I even hate to say that, but I'm 40 this year. Okay. <laughs> so theoretically, if I wanted to retire, I could retire in 10, you know, 15 to uh, 25 years if I didn't have my income. Right. And people might think that's, a, that's, that's a long time off. It's not. I mean, what we want to do is again, we want to be proactively thinking about our long-term wealth. What are we doing to be generating income? What are we doing to be building assets? Because if you're in a position where your income is taken away from you because you become sick or because you retire and you think, oh my God, overnight, wow, my income has disappeared, you're leaving yourself vulnerable. So this is why diversification, using your business to build profit and then use that profit to buy assets is so important. And it's fundamentally, it underpins everything that I teach. This is why knowing your numbers is so important because I want you to maximize the profit in your business. So then you have the freedom of choice to choose what you do with that. And as I said, for me, it's teaching you to build assets outside of your business to diversify your income as well. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, we've covered so much. <laughs> I did say everyone, you need to like listen to this again. It's just honestly, I'm so grateful because this is this conversation needs to be had and it needs to be louder than it currently is. There is so much six figure, seven figure nonsense and shiny, shiny on Instagram. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, people ran businesses before social media, you know, people yeah. ran businesses. There are millionaires 
that you don't even know about. Yes. <laughs> there yeah. are many things kicking back, walking past you every day that you would never know about because... Yes. And you know what? That's a good point. So go and buy the book, The Millionaire Next Door, because people, listen, quite often the people who flash their cash all over social media are actually income rich, asset poor. Mm. Okay. So... So know that there are, as you said, there's a lot of millionaires walking around, or not even necessarily millionaires, but people who have financial freedom, mm. who don't necessarily fit what you think financial freedom or financial success looks like. So go and buy the book, The Millionaire Next Door, because I think it will be an eye opener for a lot of people mm. in understanding, okay, what financial success looks like. Because let me tell you, the wealthy who are smart with their money do not drop 2,000 pounds on a new bag every season. They do not spend 500 pounds on a new pair of shoes every month, okay? That's not what they do with their money unless they have income from assets, which allows them to do that. But even then, see, I, this is why I have still have an upgrade in my car because I'm like, okay, so the car I want is going to cost me 400 pounds a month. Is that 400 pounds a month that I'm willing to use for a liability, which is what it is, or should have put that 400 pounds into my assets. And this is why I have a constant battle between where am I putting my money? What am I spending my money on? And I am going to treat myself next year. I've decided I'm going to treat myself and upgrade my car next year uh, because, because I need to. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just understanding that what you think financial freedom looks like and what independence and financial success looks like is actually not what it really looks like. So yeah, definitely. I'd recommend that book. That's a great shout. Um, you know, just to, go on from that before we um sort of wrap up and let uh, let people know where they can find out a bit more is the uh book get rich lucky bitch yeah. in that she says look in the mirror and say this is what a wealthy woman looks like and that for me stuck with me because i had in my head oh my gosh a wealthy person is the instagram look the perfect hair the perfect makeup the heels the you know the perfect figure the perfect life and i was like I don't want that. I don't want to have to put my makeup on every day. That sounds like work. <laughs> you know, I don't want to have to learn how to do that with my hair. And oh my gosh, like, so to me, I was trying to live up to a vision of a woman that mm. I thought that was what a rich woman looked like. And then yeah. only once I started like getting some green myself, I was like, oh no, this is, this is, this is what she looks like. <laughs> Kicking back in her me. slippers. <laughs> it's just me with a lot more zeros in my bank. That's it. <laughs> that's all it is exactly and I was like oh okay and that switch that clicked really you know we've taken we've covered so so much in this I know I know <laughs> but you know that is really realizing you know you said it so many times um Dominique that it is possible for you and for so yeah. long I thought it wasn't and for yeah. so long I thought it was for other people the people with the flashy cars the big houses yeah. You know, when you look back, when I look back at my vision boards that I've created over the, you know, the previous years and compared to now, before it was all like the shiny, yes, the, cars, the flashy cars, the design of things. Because I thought that is what I, that was what wealth looked like. Yes. And yes. now I'm like, stupid girl, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> and it's not. Do you know what it is as well? It's because people attach financial success and wealth to materialistic things. Yes. But actually, when you start to dig into it, and this is where we've got to be careful because it could be here for another hour going on about this. <laughs> but it actually comes back to your values. Mm -hmm. And so that's often a starting point when I'm working with someone as I understand what's what's actually what's the most important thing that's most valuable to you what's important to you because it's never about the car it's never about the house once we drill into it it's like well i actually want more time with my family i want to have the money to be able to go on these amazing holidays where my children get to see things from the world that they would never normally see i want those experiences so yeah it's understanding how does Pierce financial success look like for you and how does that link to what you value? Because really, cars don't bring you joy. They might bring you instant gratification for all of a minute. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you might think, oh, this is, this is people looking at me, I'm successful. Yeah. This will make a good Instagram story. Everyone will exactly. buy from me now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But as I said, for you to be in a position where you get to spend time with the loved ones and doing things that you love and to have the means to be able to do it, that to me is what success looks like. It's not about the cars, it's not about the houses, it's not even about the money that you're earning. It's just about them, what the money does and allows you to do 
and buy more of what you do uh, and allows you to do more of what you love with whom you love. And that's what's most important. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So I, I am going to wrap it up now because I'm just really uh, mindful of everyone's time. But, you know, do listen back to this because we covered so, so much in that short amount of time. But where can we find out a little bit more about you? Where can the listeners find? And also, don't you have another masterclass which is going to go into to some more of this as well coming up soon? Mm do so i'm going to be hosting a masterclass um next week where we're going to be talking about um how to increase your income and your profit margins because said profit is the one thing that i will teach you to focus on because this is the all the rewards you get the financial rewards you get um, for all the hard work that you put in so i'm going to be running a few free masterclass out on that next week um but you can head over to my instagram handle which is dominique malali um i also have a facebook page um with same thing, Dominic Wally. But I tend to spend the majority of my time on Instagram. Um, and that's where you ha- you'll find me. So if you have any questions, anything you want to share with me, then please don't hesitate to drop me a message. I'd love to hear your stories. Yeah. And do go to her Instagram. Um, you guys all know that that's where I'm all the time, but her content is amazing. Every time I read a post, I'm like, oh, learn something new. <laughs> so, and you know, it, it's it's so worth. And I will definitely be putting the link to the masterclass um, and Dominique's uh, Instagram in the show notes, so you can head over there for those. But thank you so so much. I, I think it's fair to say you've given everyone some food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't out their brains, no doubt. <laughs> so thankfully i've finally got someone on the show that speaks as fast as i do so if everyone wants to put it on half speed that's fine <laughs> i know i was i must admit i was laughing when you said before if you want to speed it up i was thinking no heather that's not a good idea i'm um, scouts i speak fast anyway they might want to take it back by 25 percent because you know i might especially when i get excited I, I tend to speed it up so yeah but that, that's that's what we want we want people that are passionate about what they do and uh you brought it so thank you so much Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Till next time, my lovelies. I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Focused and Fearless podcast. If you'd like to continue the conversation or have a question that you would like answered in an upcoming episode, head over to Instagram and connect with me at Heather Angel Coaching. If you enjoy this podcast, please share your thoughts in a review on iTunes. I truly value your feedback and I take the time to read every single review. Have a beautiful week and I'll see you in the next episode.